Hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Now, I don't know why the intro didn't play there, but today's going to be a different one because I said so. I hope everyone's doing well. As you can see, I'm on my own today. Unfortunately, I will be on my own. Uh, I'm still baffled to why that intro did not play. I set it up to play, just didn't want to. Anyway, uh, Dan's on holiday in Norfolk. I don't know where in Norfolk, but Dan, if you're watching this back or listening to it, I hope you had a good holiday. Or if you're listening to it or watching it now, I hope you're having a good holiday. Uh, Jordan, is he's got a family thing today. He, he's got a lot of work to do as well, because obviously once he's, he's basically, his whole job is himself. You know, he has a few people that helps out here and there, but everything like editing-wise is basically himself. So he's got to schedule stuff to be up at certain times. He's also going on holiday uh, in a few days. Um, just for a few days, but once you've got to go on holiday, you've got to set everything to be in place whilst you're away, and then when you come back. But he's also got a family thing he needs to go to today, so I'm going to be doing an episode by myself. I hope anyone's um, not put off by that. But anyway, welcome everyone. I can see a few people in the chat here. Uh, feel free to pop some questions off towards the end. We'll have a little Q&A session at the end. But the first thing I want to talk about today um, isn't to do with the thumbnail if you saw the thumbnail you're going to come to this and go what the fuck why is he even talking about this uh i was in a road traffic collision i don't know if that's the correct term to call it but anyway i'll talk about this for like five ten minutes then we'll move on to the ancestry and the dna stuff because that is really interesting despite the fact that my results were quite boring but first of all Right, let me just show you. Right, on Tuesday, about midday, I was driving the work van. I was making some deliveries. I've got five deliveries to do, uh, five deliveries or pickups that day to do. I'm going to be out for like six, probably best part of six hours, five hours on the road, right? Now, if you don't live near me, this will be just low, and you probably don't give a fuck anyway. But I just wanted to put this here just on the absolute off chance, like the 1%, 0.5% chance that whoever was driving this van that crashed into me, and I say crash, I need to just, you know, I wasn't injured. No one was injured. He, he smashed the mirror on the van. It could have been a lot worse, though. A, a few inches the other side. I'm looking at some some form of damage to my right arm at least if he was going fast enough. But yeah, so he's crashed into the wing mirror of the van that I'm driving. I don't know if he's distracted, but he's come over to my side of the road and before I've had time enough to try and turn left out of his way, he smashed the mirror. Now I had the window open because it was a hot day. It was blazing that Tuesday. About 12 o'clock midday, so again, pretty much the towards the hottest the day's going to be. I had the window open, and the the wing mirror has smashed, like he's decimated it, and it has smashed all into my face, like the glass come through the window into my face. Luckily, I was wearing sunglasses, so no injuries, like I said. I had to brush myself off, you know, delicately, because the glass was just like, so small the fragments like it's so easy just to cut yourself on that so yeah after i did that took a couple of seconds to make sure i had no cuts and bruises this guy just and i uh, that i am being i'm presuming that it was a guy it may have been a female driver i won't say anything about you know the female drivers or male drivers they can be as shit as each other this is 2023 right so he's fucked off. He smashed the wing mirror, come onto my side of the road, and then fucked off. Brilliant. That's superb. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so before I could even put my head out of the window and turn around to see if he was like what his number plate was or anything, he's fucking gone. This guy has floored it. Literally, I could hear the rev just going like, <laughs> you know I mean, the absolute just. I don't even know what to 
describe it as but the desperation to get away was real. Like that van was revving hard, hard out of there. I'll show you where it happened, but first I'll show you the damage to the old van. And bear in mind, this is the first before the first delivery of the day. Not great. So now I've got to drive for five or six hours without a, a driver's side wing mirror. Not not the uh, best of starts to the day. That was the damage. I don't know if you can see that, if I can angle the phone. That is the damage to the wing mirror. Basically, the, the casing <laughs> was just held on by wires. It wasn't, wasn't brilliant. Um, so I had to take the casing off, which required me having to fuck about with the wires for about 10 minutes, all whilst I was trying to get hold of the police. Uh, 999. I didn't call them first because I didn't think it was uh, necessarily um, a technically a, a life. It wasn't, there was no lives at risk. There was no emergency, I guess. So I called 999 after I called 101, which is the non emergency number. 101, because I was in the buttfuck end of nowhere, which Haddisco is, if you know where Haddisco is around near me, you know where this is. Uh, there's very little signal. So I couldn't really get an answer on 101. The automated message would play and then nothing would happen. I wouldn't go through to an operator or anything. But when I called 999, it did get through. And once they found out in about five seconds into the call, oh, is anyone injured? No. Is anyone blocking the road? No. All right, well, you have to call 101. Sick. So I then had to wait a couple of hours to call 101. To I had to get the deliveries done or at least start a couple of them. Um, so, yeah, I waited like an hour or two to call 101. When I called 101, uh, that conversation was about 20 seconds before they said, there's an online form you need to fill out. See you later. Clearly, no one gives a fuck. Whatever. That's fine. So I filled out the on the online form. Well, let me just show you where where this happened. And then I'll promise we will go on to the ancestry stuff, the DNA stuff. It's quite quite interesting. Right, let's put this on the screen. And I will drop the little man. Or little person, sorry. Little person, 2023. Little person um, to where it was. Right. So we're on this road, single carriageway. Uh, ditches either side. Probably want to be... Uh, you know, be a bit mindful of your steering. Obviously, this guy was, I keep calling him a guy. It could have been a woman. It could have been a them. It could have been a they. I don't know. Might have been Sam Smith for all I know. Right, it goes to 30 here. I've slowed down to 30. This guy's smashed into me about here. Um, I've stopped, brushed myself off. He's fucked off. I've driven, what, about 50 metres up the road to here and pulled into this bit here to basically assess the damage. And that's where I started to call 101 and 999. Uh, no one stopped. There were people behind me. No one stopped. No one said, are you all right? No one said, oh, I can be a witness for you if you want. Everyone just fucked off past me. So I don't know if that's a damning assessment of humanity or society around where I live. <laughs> you can go fuck yourselves. No. Look, this guy needs to be, you know what I mean? This is, he needs to be stabbed. No, I'm joking. He does need to be a bit more mindful though because one, he left the scene of a hit and run uh, and two, he smashed the wing mirror into my face and had no, took no responsibility for it. All The only thing I can say about the van that hit me was that it was silver and it had orange uh, vinyl, orange like kind of design on it. That's all I got. So there's not a lot. I ain't got a number plate. I haven't got what the person looked like inside. That's it. I don't know what to do with that information. I've given all the information I possibly can to the police. They'll do fuck all. Nothing will happen. That's it is what it is. But yeah, that was my um, lovely Tuesday morning. Well, technically afternoon. Yeah, not, not great. Not an amazing start to the Tuesday. But I soldiered through. We got there in the end, and uh, he's just, he's, he's hit and run me, isn't he? That's what he does. 
apparently. He obviously weren't paying attention. There's no way he was. But anyway, let's get back or to get on point of the podcast today. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard of 23 and me. I do need a camera in my car. I do need, because I haven't got one in my car, but we need one in the van as well, the work van, which is what he smashed into. We definitely need one. Because things like that, when you're driving in a van day in, day out, they're going to happen so often, like people just not paying attention and stuff. But anyway, let's get on to 23 and Me. Now, 23 and Me is interesting because they basically give you, they do like different tiers, but I can't remember exactly the tier that we got, me and my partner um, did this kind of, we did it at the same time. We kind of bought it for each other, I guess. Um, and it gives you like an ancestry composition and it gives you like a, your traits, like your, what you're more likely to have. Like, are you more likely to have hair on your back or not? That sort of stuff. But what is interesting about this is, um, unfortunately, how boring my uh, ancestry composition is. I'll show it on the screen. Go on my ancestry overview. I'll pop this on there. Uh, so that really speaks for itself, to be honest. I mean, that is as Brexit as it gets, isn't it? 82.8% British and Irish. Northwestern European, 100%. What are you saying? French and German, I'm 11.8%. Scandinavian, 3.1%. And then just broadly, Northwestern European, 2.3%. There you go. Now, if I click into the British and Irish, it gives you like a a breakdown of the areas in which you have matches or likely matches. East Anglia. We got East Anglia. Highly likely match. I mean, that makes sense. There's a lot of family this sort of way. That does make sense. Um, England, just as a whole, obviously that's going to be a match. Wales, again, highly likely match, but I don't know of any. I think there's a couple of people on my granddad's side, but I don't know if they originated from Wales. I think they just moved to Wales. South England, again, likely. Yorkshire, um, Humberside and East Midlands, I was a bit iffy on. I know some of my dad's relatives, again, I don't know if they were born in uh, East Midlands, but I know they moved there. But they may have they may have moved back there. I don't know a lot about my dad's side, to be honest. Um, so yeah, but yeah, basically, what you do with twenty three and Me, I think ours cost. I want to say eighty five, ninety pounds. Might be wrong. Again, they do three different tiers. You essentially just get more information. Um, the higher tiers you go up, um, you have to, it's the process isn't nice. Like you have to gob into a fucking vial. Like it's literally just like a little plastic tube that you're spitting into. Like, you know what I mean? That's, that's what you got to do. You send that off. And then I think ours took about three weeks, maybe a bit more, maybe a month to come back. Might be a bit more than that. But yeah, you, you send your spit away essentially and they analyze it and they're like, oh, well, this is uh, got characteristics of this. This is where you're likely to be from. Yeah, so not. I would say that's not that amazing. I don't know. I was surprised there wasn't any more in terms of Spanish or maybe even Italian because... I was under the impression that my granddad's side of the family, when you trace it back far enough, I was under the impression that there was some Spanish somewhere. Turns out, no, nothing. So whether that was a lie or maybe that was just something that got misconstrued and I misunderstood, don't know. It did make me support Spain when I was younger, though, and now I feel I've been robbed because I supported Spain for the only reason that my granddad extended family or 
relatives further back would have had um, s- some links to Spain. So I've just been supporting Spain for just for fuck all. It's it's another a crushing blow to my to my mental health. Yeah, grandpappy got some secrets. I bet he has. I bet he has. Bob Bobby. I do love that name. Bob Bobby. We all came from Africa planes, apparently, so we're all related somehow. It's, I guess it's kind of true. I will show in a little while. I think it's on my mother's side, so it would technically involve my granddad. I think it's on my mother's side that there is a, like a record of ancestors coming from Africa. On my dad's side, it's very interesting. There's a couple of things on my dad's side that are weird that I'll go through later on but yeah that's I mean that I was not expecting 82.8% British I was expecting pretty high I was expecting like maybe 60% maybe 70% I wasn't expecting 82.8 I wasn't expecting there to be any French or German because as far as I'm aware is nothing. I I can't think of any family member that is originated from France or Germany. I have no idea. Ashton Mitchell. Well, there's a stat that apparently one third of men, I think it is, that trace back to Genghis Khan, which is mental. That is mental. I mean, to be fair, Genghis Khan was mental. And he, he he did a lot of pillaging and, you know, R wording. But yeah, that's that is crazy. He was pretty pro- he was prolific. I will give him that. He was prolific. No holes barred. So let's have a look at my ancestry. Let's go on the all the reports. And let's go on my We'll go on my mother's side first, which is the maternal side. This is where I think it shows um, from Africa. Yeah, so 180,000 years ago is where the Haplo group um, on my mother's side originates from. And that is in Africa. And you can see uh, 65,000 years ago they moved or started to move towards heading into Europe or through Europe and then branched out from there up to 25,000 years ago and then 14 and a half thousand years ago is where they kind of branched into Europe and started, you know what I mean, going for it. But my uh, my dad's side... I feel is, you know, a lot more interesting. There's a couple of coincidences on my dad's side. And I, I guess in the are coincidences, I really don't, when we go through this, it'll be really quite evident. I hope that it is a coincidence, but it's, it's spooky nonetheless. Right. I'm a, my dad, like he, again, my dad's side, I didn't even realize that. I didn't look at that. That is also or originated from Africa. So yeah, I think Bob Bobby is, is right. I think everyone at some point is going to be linked to Africa if you go far enough back. But my dad's side has got a paternal line ancestor, or he shares a paternal line ancestor with Nile of the Nine Hostages. Now, it's not exactly the same. Now, when you hear Nile of the Nine Hostages, it doesn't sound great, does it? It doesn't sound like, oh, what a good person. Well, he must have been really nice. A great, I don't know, philanthropist. Yeah, just ruling all the lands, giving away benefits to people, you know, giving them money, giving them shelter. That doesn't scream that. It screams hostage taker. So I've got that in my history. That's good. Um, Also, I'll read this out here, but... My dad's name is Neil, and there is a part in this where <laughs> I'll read it out. It'll ju- it's just a bit weird. 
The spread of haplogroup RM269 in Northern Ireland and Scotland was likely aided by men like Nile of the Nine Hostages, perhaps more myth than man. I'll just zoom in a bit so you guys can see it as well. Uh, perhaps more myth than man, Nile of the Nine Hostages is said to have been king of Tara in northwestern Ireland in the late 4th century CE. His name comes from the tale of nine hostages that held that he held from the regions he ruled over. Though the legendary stories of his life may have been invented hundreds of years after he died, genetic evidence suggests that the U the E Nile or E Neil dynasty, that's what I mean, the Neil link, whose name means descendants of Nile, did in fact trace back to just one man who bore a branch of Hapla Group RM269. The Uyneel ruled, ruled the various degrees as kings of Ireland from the 7th to 11th century CE in the highly patriarchal society. Get in, patriarchy! Society of medieval Ireland. Their status allowed them to have uh, outsized numbers of children and spread their paternal lineage each generation. In fact, researchers have estimated that between two and three million men with roots in Northwest Ireland are paternal line descendants of Nile. Well, that's good to know, isn't it? My, um, my, my ancestor or my paternal line ancestor turns out to be uh, pretty much a bastard. That's great. I mean, there's not a lot I can do about it, really, is there? You know, so you can't come at me. You can't. You can't come at me. It is weird though that the Neil, this the Ui Neil or Ui Neil dynasty. That is weird. I know you don't pronounce that as Neil because it's N, weird E with accent I L L, but it is weird. It is weird. Bob, Bobby, Lozzie, perhaps that's where your patriot love comes from. Maybe it is, but I'm being patriotic towards the wrong country because it sounds like I should be patriotic towards Ireland, if anything, based on that. But yeah, that that's um, that is very weird, but also at the same time interesting. I think Jordan, because Jordan's done this as well, and I'm. I hope to get Dan to do it as well because I'd like to explore his and uh, Jordan's explored his a little bit as well. But I remember he was, he shared, a, I don't know if it was a maternal line or paternal, I don't know if it was on his dad's or his mum's side, but King Louis, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if it's the third or the second, maybe even the fourth, I don't know. One of the King Louis in France, he had a, or shared a uh, an ancestor with on it, either his mum or his dad's side. So yeah, that's it is weird. That is pretty weird, but it is quite fascinating to see at what point the different uh, haplo groups, which are what the like the RM two six nine is a haplo group, RM three four three is a different one. It kind of categorizes when it changed and people like moved. It's crazy crazy but what i want to talk about next is the um health traits because this is interesting oh jordan's in the chat hello mate got you on the other screen so sorry i'm not on today loz and guys so busy but yeah king louis the the one who was killed by the rebellion on my mum's side on his mum's side there you go um so yeah, he's got a king. He's a, a technically a relative to some degree of King Louis. So yeah, that's that is one for the books. But I'm gonna go on my health and traits because this stuff is just blows my mind how accurate some of this stuff is. So you could go into all these things here. I choose traits because they're the most interesting. I mean. You can ask for things, they can check for things like, do you have certain, I don't know if it's a protein or certain, the big thing for me was Alzheimer's because I know my nan had Alzheimer's and I was like, 
well, I guess it's best for me to know if I have a chance or I carry the the genetic I don't know extent I don't know what it's called because you can still get it without having this. You can still get it without having this in the report. But there's a certain uh I don't know if it's I can't remember the name of it it's called, but if you carried it, there's a chance you could get it. But unfortunately for me, I I don't have it because that was the big kind of worry, especially with my nan having it. But traits is, you can ask for them not to search for that as well if you don't want the gene variant. That's the one. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. But yeah, they, um, you can ask for them not to give you that information if you don't want to know. If you don't want to know, that's fine. Um, this isn't sponsored by 23andMe, but yeah, I mean, share the love. Yeah, you can ask for them to omit that sort of information if you really don't want to know. But I kind of wanted to know, so yeah. Yeah, I went for the health one um, just because I can't remember if it was on a special offer or not. It must have been, must have been, because I wouldn't have thought it was, if it was too much, I'd have been like, "That's I'm not paying that, I'm not paying that. But yeah, so there's a few things that I found out health-wise that has made me go, okay, that's that's not too bad. That's good. Um, I'm, and the thing I obsessed with a little bit was the Alzheimer's thing because of my nan. But let's get into the traits. So black hair, Lawrence, your genetics predict 76 per chance you have little or no back hair. I said black, I meant back hair. I don't actually know if I've got back hair. Um, Amber, you'll have to let me know. Have I got back hair? We'll, we'll eagerly await that response. Bold spot. Your genetics predict you've got a 71% chance. 71% chance you do not have a bald spot. That is fucking brilliant. I'm absolutely ecstatic about that one. Uh, obviously the 29% no my luck I'll start to develop one sick cheek dimples Lawrence your genetics predict 52% chance that you don't have dimples so pretty much that one's pretty much 50-50 really um, but again no not really baldy there you go so I ain't got I haven't got any back hair I ain't got any back hair so that that's 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 right. That is correct. Cleft chin. Seventy-seven percent chance you do not have a cleft chin. Again, I'm I'm liking those odds. Not to say anything's wrong with it, but you know what I mean. Uh, dandruff. Sixty-two percent chance you have had dandruff. Definitely one. I. That is pretty much something I've had for years. Years is dandruff. Uh, it's not as bad as it was before, like maybe three, four years ago, maybe even five years ago now, but that is really, it, that is definitely one that has come true. Earlobe type. This is how like specific it gets. You're talking about earlobe types. I don't know why I find this so interesting, but it is interesting. Uh, 80% chance you have detached earlobes. I don't even know myself. Uh, I can confirm, I think, that that is detached. So that would be correct. Early hair loss. This is a big one. 74%, 74% chance you will not experience hair loss or thinning before the age of 40. Get in! Get in, because let me tell you, if that was happening, I'd be fucked. I am not, I'm literally so comfortable in saying this. I'm so comfortable in saying this, that I would look horrific bald. Just because I've got loads of like little moles on my head. I've got like probably like four or five. I just don't look, I just. It just wouldn't look nice. It wouldn't look pretty, you know? Amber says, you have a butt chin. How the fuck do you know? You've never seen me without a beard, I don't think. Uh, I'm calling conspiracy on that one. That's bollocks. Uh, earwax type. 
93% chance you have wet, sticky earwax. I can confirm it's viscous, it's sticky, it is definitely wet as well. And my eye colour, 52% chance of blue eyes. I have blue eyes, so that is, I'm literally par for the course on that one. It's crazy that under 1% chance of dark brown eyes. Because my, my, I don't know how this works into it, but my mum has brown eyes. And I have blue eyes. My dad has blue eyes, so I'm guessing I got the blue eyes from his side. But yeah, that's, that is crazy how different You've gone from 52% chance of blue eyes to under 1% chance of dark brown eyes. And my mum's got dark brown eyes. It is crazy. But Bobby, you would look so different bald. Honestly, I would. I, I, now, when I was in high school, um, you probably heard the story. I've said it before a couple of times on the podcast, I think, where I went to go to get my hair cut. For the first time by myself, my mum was doing some shopping. She said, go and get your hair cut. I was like, okay. Went to the uh, barbers, sat down. And all I could remember, because my mum used to come with me and say, I will have this. He'll have this. Right? Ashton, don't start the fade for Neil any, uh, anymore, please. Because that is, that is giving me flashbacks to a really dark time. Really dark time. Uh, that was a uh, catchphrase for a long, long time. I'm not getting a fade because I just don't like the way they look. No offense to anyone who's got a fade. Is what it is. But yeah, I went to this uh, barber's. My mum used to come with me and say, "I oh, will have this," and all I could remember was her saying number two. So I used my power of memory, and was like, "Right, she said number two. I'll say number two to him, the barber." And we'll see what happens. And the barber's gone, oh, you have number two all over, do you? I said, yeah, knowing fuck all what that meant. Number two all over. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know if the numbers meant shorter or longer. I don't know. So I said, yeah, two all over, please. And he did two all over. That was, he, he did that exact to a T, what he said he was going to do. To be fair to him, did a good job. But when he put the mirror up at the back, is that because obviously they do it in front of a mirror. They put it up and they show you the sides of the back. And I was like, oh my God, that's quite short. That is fucking short. I mean, that's shorter than I expected. And I'm sure that's not what my mum has told me to get. That doesn't look like it did before. When I came here last, something's gone wrong. Okay, so... I paid him. I think it was a fiver back in the day. Oof, loving haircuts for a fiver. Paid him a fiver, left. I went to go meet my mum in the shop that she was doing the shopping in. And she's like, looked at me and gone, what's that? And I was like, that's, that's the haircut, mum. She was like, that's not what you normally have. I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't know what I normally had. Well, it's done now. Let's just go. Pay for the shopping. Go past the cashier who's going like, is he a convict? Why have you got a convict with you? It was really short. Really short. But yeah, that's um, that was the closest I've ever come to bald. And that was not a good, not a good sight. I had to go to school as well for like, fortunately for me, my hair grows really quick. So within like two weeks, it wasn't really a short that short anymore but for two weeks solid i look like a criminal but i mean i've got some mad respect those two weeks you know the sort of people that were kind of bashing to me or smack my books out of me and they didn't do it that, that, those two weeks they knew i was a man not to be fucked with for those two weeks i was a convict in the school i would have absolutely battered anyone even if they looked at me but yeah after the two weeks uh, kind of that once the hair grows a little bit more that kind of intimidation factor just uh, doesn't work anymore but yeah that's that is a story about me not just i'm not going to be bald i'm not because i can't be even if i have to get like a toupee i will i will go there i will go there hair transplant i'm there let's go well other traits we got here finger length ratio 
Um, 85% chance your ring finger is longer than your index finger. That is correct. It is longer. Freckles, uh, 81% chance that you have few, if any, freckles. I don't have any freckles as far as I know. So that is also correct in terms of the probability. Hair photo bleaching. I don't even know what this is. 70% chance you experience hair photo bleaching. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing that is that to do with the sun changing the color of your hair. Just from the, the picture on there I'm looking at, I'm guessing that's what they mean. Yeah, I'm pretty sure mine does go lighter in the sun. I thought that was just everyone, to be honest. I thought that was just the case for everyone, but obviously not. 70% chance, yep. Yeah. That has happened. Hair texture. Now, this is a weird one because my hair texture on my head is night and day compared to my beard. My beard hair is kind of scraggly and a bit more thick or it almost, it almost feels like nylon. So my hair texture, 43% chance of slightly wavy hair, a 36% chance of straight hair, 14% chance of wavy hair, 5% chance of big curls, 2% chance of small curls, and under 1% chance of very tight curls. As you can see, I don't have any curls. I have some slight waviness to my hair, so 43% chance of slightly wavy hair, I guess is what, what I'm looking at there. Um, light or dark hair, I think my, my dad... I'm pretty sure he had blondish hair. My mum's got naturally dark brown hair. And I have dark brown hair. So, yeah. I mean, it almost looks black, but it is brown. So a uh, 60% chance of dark brown hair is the one to go to there. Why, why are you putting a laughing face after hair gets lighter in the sun? Have you heard of photo bleaching before? I've never heard of that. So don't don't give me that shit. Don't give me that shit. I'm getting fucking I'm getting grilled in the chat because I didn't know what photo bleaching is. Why why didn't you know that? Call yourself a scientist. I don't. So why the fuck would I know that? I'm not saying that scientists have to know it. I mean, fuck you. Oh anyway, newborn hair. Sixty nine percent chance you had little or no hair at birth. Not being funny. I can't remember. Uh, that's something I don't have information on. I'm sure there are pictures of me somewhere as a wee old child. I don't know if there'll be pictures of me at birth. I mean, I don't know if my dad was that fucking... I don't know if he was wading through the trenches of the uh, <laughs> at my birth with a camera. But I'm sure I'll be able to see some pictures of me when I was just a little baby and i honestly can't say if i had no hair at birth or not i'll have to ask my mum on that one red hair you have a 99 percent chance you do not have red hair well i don't so i feel like the uh, probability is matched up on that one skin pigmentation 39 percent chance of very fair skin 32 percent chance of moderately fair skin 25% chance of light beige, 3% of olive, 1% of light brown, and under 1% chance of dark brown. There should be another category for me on this because I am the most Caucasian man I've ever seen. I mean, I am probably a shade away from being albino. Shade away. So close. But yeah. Stretch marks. 55% chance uh, you have stretch marks. I do have stretch marks. That's that's quite close, though. 45 and 55% is pretty close to 50-50. Toe length ratio. 71% chance you have a longer big toe. Ah, right, okay. I was like, what compared to what toe? I didn't read the bottom bit. Chance you have a longer... Uh, second toe, 29%. I can confirm my big toe is the longest toe on my feet. 
you, oh, this is, this is, um, a very close, but I can confirm I don't have a unibrow. 50% chance you do not have a unibrow. 42% chance you have a little bit of a unibrow. 8% chance you have a moderate to thick unibrow. I remember at school, there was a couple of kids who had unibrows and you did feel from a little bit. I know I never really got the, um, the draw or the, the kind of attention that it got from people to take, take the piss out of people with unibrow. But then the same could be said for pretty much any physical feature, even like your hair color. I just, that, that particular thing, I didn't go around. You know, I would say stuff about gingers. I've said plenty of stuff about gingers in my time at school. I think everyone did. Uh, but unibrow wasn't one of the ones. No, I can't remember that being the go-to for ridicule for me. I mean, I was just like, oh, well, they just got, they just got no gap in their eyebrow, really. That's it, isn't it? Uh, Widow's Peak. What is a wi oh that is the hair, isn't it? Where you, it kind of points. Fifty eight percent chance you do not have a widow's peak. Um let's just get rid of that for a second. I'll pop it back up. I don't have a widow's peak, I don't think. Okay, I confirm. No widow's peak. And they're all they're all my traits. They are all my traits. They're so, they're, some of them are so specific, like the newborn hair, uh, the hair photo bleaching, earwax type. They're crazy. Knockdown ginger. I don't, I honestly don't understand how anyone ever got to the point where, like, right, we've got this game where you knock on the door and you run before they answer it. That's the game. What should we call this game? It hasn't got a name. Ding Dong Dash, that's quite cool. Yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um Knockdown Ginger. Why? Knock knock run. That that makes sense. That is literally the premise of the idea. That makes sense. Ding dong dash. I'm agreeing with that, but knock knock down ginger? No, I'm not really sure about that one. Weird. Ah, this is the thing. Asparagus odor detection. What the fuck? Who has said this needs to be a trait we need to include in 23andMe? It's the um, basically their ability to smell asparagus. Who the fuck's just said that, that needs to be in this report? Asparagus odor detection. Likely, I can smell it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what benefit that has to anyone, but yeah, sixty-six percent can smell the odor. Thirty-four percent cannot smell the odor. That's crazy that people don't smell the same shit. That's crazy. I can understand if people don't like the smell, but is it because the smell is different to them that they don't like it? Or is it because the certain things that are in the smell they don't like? I guess it was that. But if people can't smell asparagus, oh, it says, like, your genetics can make you likely to be able to smell the asparagus odor in your urine. Okay, right. But still, like, 34% people can't smell that? That's crazy. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you not be able to smell it? Why would your genetics make you not? Was there something along the line? If if you smelled asparagus, you were in danger. I could understand that of like 66% of people was like, oh, you can smell it because your ancestors, when they smelt asparagus, they knew they were in fucking deep shit. So they had to get out there. It's like someone waiting to piss on you after they've eaten like a fucking tub of asparagus. Bit of taste. I just thought, again, I think, why? 
I would think everyone's able to taste bitterness. Your genetics make you likely to be able to detect certain bitter tastes. 56% are likely to taste, 44 are unlikely. That is crazy. Cilantro tasted version. Now, are, is cilantro? I'm pretty sure that's rocket, isn't it? Let me search that. Because if that is rocket, I fucking hate rocket. What is it? What is it? Oh, it's coriander. Slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro. I can't say I dislike coriander. I mean, if you put too much of it on something, it is. That is a bit too much, isn't it? Ice cream flavor preference. More likely to prefer vanilla over chocolate ice cream. Fuck vanilla. Chocolate is the one. I'd even go as far as saying strawberry is better than vanilla. So that can fuck off. 23 and me, I want a refund. 64% prefer vanilla ice cream or likely to prefer vanilla ice cream. You're more likely to prefer vanilla ice cream over chocolate ice cream. Why? I think vanilla is... I mean... To be fair, there's def different levels of vanilla ice cream. You know, if you're just going to go and get like a store-bought vanilla ice cream, meh. But if you actually get like a proper vanilla gelato, you know, from uh, when I went to Rome, some of the, oh, some of the fucking ice cream or gelato, as they called it. Oof. I mean, I could have just been there for fucking years just eating that shit up. I mean, I'd need a crane to move, but it's worth the price. Likely prefer sweet to salty. I can't. Mm, depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I just want a bit of that sweet, sweet sugar. And other times I want to get my fucking sodium levels up. You know what I mean? What's weird and wonderful? Ah, this is interesting. This stuff is interesting. Ability to match musical pitch. More likely to a more likely to be able to match musical pitch. Is there one for reading? Because I'm shit at that. I mean, as far as I know, I'm pretty good at that. Fifty-seven percent can match musical pitch. But then that's again, that's crazy to me that people can't do that because all that it is for me, and it's just my my perspective on this i mean I, I haven't thought for one second that no one could do this but for me you're just matching a sound that you're already hearing so i i don't understand how anyone can't do that unless i've interpreted that wrong and it's not what i think it is bunions less likely than average to have a or had a bunion i don't think i've had a bunion i've had an onion I do like onions. Bunions, I don't. Fear of heights, less likely than average to be afraid of heights. Bullshit, I hate heights. I would say anything over like 10 metres, I start to get the, mm, I don't like this sort of feeling. Fear of public speaking, less likely to have a fear of public speaking. When I was younger, no, definitely not. I, d I definitely would not speak in public. Now. I still won't feel comfortable doing it and there would be a little bit of fear but nowhere near as bad. It wouldn't necessarily stop me from doing it. Flat feet, more likely than average to have flat feet. I do think I have flat feet. Feet, so yeah, that's... They're pretty accurate to be fair. Hair thickness, less likely to have thick hair. I don't know how thick my hair is really. I think it is fairly thick. Is that misophobia? 
average odds of hating chewing sounds. Mm. There are some sounds that I don't like when people chew. It depends what they're eating. They're eating. I don't mind a crunch. I don't mind a crunch. If someone's eating some like, I don't know. I don't know, like some a breadstick or something, or like a crusty loaf, some crisps. I don't mind a crunch. It's the if they're eating something that's a bit more PVA glue consistency, like that. That's the noise that would get me a little bit irate, especially if they're being overtly loud with it and they weren't even trying to subdue the noise at all. Or if they have ordered an entire plate of something that is going to sound no different, like, yes, I'll have that plate of 100% peanut butter. Cheers. And you just stop. That's the sort. Of, another fucking good one, right? Fucking Cadbury's Eclairs. First of all, shit sweet. Fuck them right off. Don't care what you're saying. Eclairs are shit. But when you get to when it gets to the point where it's no longer really hard anymore because you've been chewing on it and it's warmed up in your mouth and it goes all like gooey, that's where you get the. Not for me. Can't be done with it. Mosquito bite frequency, likely bitten as often as others. I can't say I've compared my mosquito bite frequencies to anyone else. Uh, Motion sickness, less likely to experience motion sickness. Don't really think I've had any motion sickness before properly. Photonic sneeze reflex, what is that? Oh, I read it wrong. Photic. What is photic sneeze reflex? I need to click on this. I need to look. What is the photic sneeze reflex? Ah, right. I need to search because I don't want to have to read fucking five paragraphs. What is the photic? Reflex. Oh, okay, right. It says on Google, uh, the photic, photic sneeze reflex is a condition of uncontrollable sneezing episodes in response to bright light. This reflex often manifests as a mild phenomenon, phenomenon but may cause devastating consequences in some situations. Aeroplane pilots, car drivers, etc. All oh, right, okay. So you become so distracted by sneezing that you can no longer control vehicles, or maybe that's what the guy was having when he crashed into crashed into me the other day. Who knows? Still think you're a twat, though. But yeah, I can't say I've ever. Oh, it literally says at the fucking top. Could be a case of cross wires in the brain for some people. Bright. Sunlight kicks off around a sneezing. Can't say I've ever sneezed because of the sun. I've sneezed because of hay fever that Bob Bobby has put in there. Definitely. Hay fever this year for me has been horrific. There have been a couple of times where my eyes are just streaming. I'm just sat there going, this is an enjoyable time. I really value life in this fucked up world. Fucking A fever. Wake up time. Likely to wake up around 8.48. I feel it depends because at the moment I wake up about half six, seven o'clock. But if I didn't have to go to work, if I didn't have to wake up to go to work, maybe that would be true. I don't know. But that is incorrect. I wake up at seven, roughly, every morning. Weekends, even weekends, I'll wake up at seven because your body clock is kind of like just maintaining, trying to maintain that sort of time. It's crazy how body lo- body clocks work. That's something, again, that just doesn't compute with me. How does your body know what fucking time it is to wake you up? 
Am I? I thought I was the one making the conscious decisions. Maybe it's not. Maybe someone's put on a leave or someone's all right. Seven o'clock, get up. Because a lot of the time I'll be up probably about five ten minutes before my alarm goes off. That's how regimented it is. It's insane. But yeah, that that is literally just a look. There's loads more stuff on there. Twenty three and me. Um, let me go on the family and friends. I don't know how much it is. I'm just going to try and find out how much it is. That's their membership. I don't know what that actually gives you. Oh, 23andMe Plus, you get premium heart health reports. That's cool. Advanced DNA relatives features new premium reports and features throughout the year. So that's £59 a year to get the extra. But I can't remember how much this was. It wasn't a a subscription. It was a one-time fee. Let me see how much, just quickly, just in case anyone's interested to do, in doing it. Right, the Ancestry service is... Whoa, I was well off in price. I thought it was... I thought it was like 80 quid for the health and the ancestry service but i don't remember it being that expensive you can do the ancestry service which just gives you the stuff about your ancestors so none of the health traits stuff i just smashed the camera um none of that stuff you can get that for 99 pounds currently uh and then if you put that with the health ancestry service which gives you this 65 health reports including um all the trait stuff that we went through. Uh, also, the stuff about Alzheimer's, the carrier status reports. That's £179. But they're also doing for £179 the 23andMe Plus membership for £179. So, yeah, you get the first year essentially for free. And then the next year, because the Plus is a subscription, you have to pay £59 the next year because they just continuously update um, the 23andMe Plus. To be honest, if you're not interested that you just want the one-time thing, I'd probably just go for the health one, Ancestry Service, or go for 23andMe Plus for a year and then cancel the membership, which I'm assuming you could do because then you've spent exactly the same money. And If you're not interested about the health or anything, just go for £99. Us. I think it's worth it is I think it is worth it to just to find out more about yourself and possibly about your family. But yes, yeah, um definitely interesting, especially if you've got people that um <laughs> have said, Well, my the family comes from certain places in the globe and then it turns out it really fucking didn't. It really didn't, granddad. Yeah, where you at? What are you saying, bruh? What's that about? Anyway, we'll do the last like five, ten minutes, just like a Q and A little bit. If people want to get some questions in, I'll uh, read them out and give you as best as the uh, answer as I can. Get your questions in. Also, if any of you are interested, um, I do have, or you can be a member of this channel. I do a special like podcast, VIP podcast for the members every two weeks. And I also uh, am currently playing Prey playthrough. So there's a new episode of that every week. Um, so if you're interested, four ninety nine, just a little bit extra content. Uh, get a bit more extra content. If you like the podcast, it's pretty much the same as this. I'll, I'll usually do them on my own. Um, Ashton Mitchell, are you guys going to be revisiting the games tier list? I literally have it here in front of me. I literally have it here. It's ready to go anytime. I just don't want to do it on my own because then it's just my tier list. Ideally, do it with all of us here. But yes, the plan is to finish that. Again, it might take a few weeks to do. But that is the plan. That is the old plan -a Yeah. 
there's a lot of games. <laughs> a lot of games on this. Some games I've never even heard of. Yeah, there's, I'd say there's a good, like, easily 70 plus games on there left to do. So there's a lot. There's a lot. Oh, remember, stay hydrated. It's got, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Anyone looking forward to uh, Starfield coming out in the next couple of weeks? I don't know if I've mentioned it before. Many of my, uh, the VIPs, the members of the channel would have heard this week in, week out. I just can't wait for that game to come out. It looks like it's going to be good. We good. I really hope it's good. Oh, God, I hope it's good. I really hope it is. Oh, shit. I clicked on the wrong one. We'll do Bob Bobby's first. I did click on Ashton's one, but then I cancelled it. How are you doing after your loss, mate? I hope you're doing good and you've got people supporting you. Uh, I'm doing pretty well. I still think about uh, my nanny quite a lot. But I know, unfortunately, her existence for the last few years has been not just just not enjoyable to see. You don't... She was existing. And that was it. She was having to be basically fed and look after. Not entirely 24-7 towards the end, definitely. Towards like the last few months, 100% she was having 24 care, 24 hour care. But before that, it would be my mum goes round, my sister goes round, do a day, her mum does other days. And they could maybe leave at the night, but then come back in the morning. Uh, I guess the saving grace of it that my, my mum lives next door to my granddad and obviously lived next door to my nanny um, with granddad. So, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing I'm doing okay. I feel like I'm starting to progress a little bit where I, I can function because there was a couple of weeks where I didn't talk to many people, just family and my partner and it's, that's that's fine. You just feel a bit closed off, and I did close myself off really, but it's doing a lot better. Doing a lot better, and had a lot of good people supporting me, which I really appreciate. Uh, Ashton, speaking of games, what do you think the best game from the past year is? Uh, definitely not Redfall. Past year. This is the problem with gaming at the moment and it, it looks to have maybe coming towards the end now that we're getting some new games coming out but i've been playing games that are old i've literally just started playing prey that game's from 2017 i've been playing mafia i played uh, quite a while ago last year i played mafia 3 that came out ages ago i'd probably say the most recent game i've actually played and i thought was good was probably Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, I played that at launch and I did, I did enjoy that at launch despite the glitches and shit that was going on with it. But I thought it was a good game at release still. I didn't think it was like the best game ever made, but I thought it was really good. Like really good, and now it looks all the updates have done to it, and then when the DLC comes out, unfortunately in September, I am going to literally be inundated for the end of the year to play games. Got uh, Starfield coming out, uh, Phantom Liberty, the DLC for tw <laughs> for um, Cyberpunk coming out. Then you've got things like Forza. I'll play Forza. I like racing games. And then you've also got things like Payday 3 coming out. They're all coming out at the same time. Um, is it Lies of P? The kind of the weird Pinocchio Dark Soulsy game. I'll probably try that. And they're all coming out in September, October time. And then you've got things like the mods for Fallout 4. There's the Fallout London, or I think it's called Fallout London. 
the mod for that is coming out. You've got a couple other mods for Fallout coming out. I'm sure at some point when the Fallout TV show comes around, you'll see some sort of release within the Fallout universe for a game, whether it be a remaster or or a collection, I don't know. But yeah, that's it's going to be a pretty packed end of the year. And you've also got Stalker as well. I think Stalker, the new Stalker game's coming out finally, either the end of this year or start next. Interesting time. Uh, Bobby, Bob, Bobby, I hope it's good though. Well, I hope it's good too. I'm assuming you mean Starfield. Yeah, I do too, because I'm really looking forward to that. I thought Redfall was great. He didn't. For me, it's God of War Ragnarok. It's flip. It's a flipping brilliant game. I would probably feel the same, but I just haven't got a PS5. So all these games that people have been getting, like I want to play the new Spider-Man when that comes out, but I'll, I won't be able to play it because I've got a PC, but it won't be on PC for quite a long time. So, yeah, I'll have to go uh, around with mates who's got a PS5 and just rob it. No, I'm sure he'll let me play for a bit. Glad to hear my heart goes out for you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Bob, Bobby. Yeah, we've had loads of messages of support. Again, everyone who's ever sent anything for support, I really do appreciate it. We all do. Oh, God, top four Premier League prediction. Jesus Christ. Um, I suppose... Man City's got to be there Man City's got to be there I'd be absolutely astonished if they're not in the top four I'd actually go as far to say I'd be astonished if they don't win the league to be honest I think Arsenal will be there I think Newcastle will be there it's just the last spot It's going to be between Man United, Chelsea and Liverpool. Possibly. Possibly Aston Villa. But I feel like Aston Villa have got some good players. But it's whether they gel properly as a team. I mean, they they just got absolutely destroyed by Newcastle. But new players and new team might take a while to bed in. Don't know. I'm I'm going to be honest, I'm concerned a little bit about Liverpool, so I don't know if we'll make the top four. I think our best chance, ironically, of getting into the Champions League next season is possibly winning the Europa League. And that's, that's scary because that's I don't even know how many games that is. We're going to be playing a lot of games this season. The Europa League is a bigger competition in the Champions League in terms of the number of teams that are in it from the start. So there's gonna there's more games, there's more rounds. Plus you have to go generally further away places in um the Europa League. So it's not a good it's not gonna be a, a, a good time. Especially when you happen to go to like these fucking random places to play in Europa League. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm confident we'll be there or thereabouts towards the top four. Whether we actually get it, I don't know. I think it might be a re- repeat of last year, except Man United are fourth instead of third. But then at the same time, Man United are also, I've got concerns about Man United not getting into the top four. But I'll stick with that. I'll go Man City, Arsenal, Newcastle, Man United. Yeah, and I know it's going to be Liverpool, Chelsea and Aston Villa. The the way that they finish, I don't know. That was my... And the bottom three, fuck me. Uh, Luton. Nottingham Forest, I don't know if they're going to do brilliantly this season. Um, and maybe Bournemouth. I think Sheffield United, they'll run close. But I think they might 
depends. I don't really know how Sheffield United play, so I don't know if they play really defensive or not. I'm guessing they probably will be. I've got no idea. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know what players Bournemouth have signed. Luton, I think, are the obvious candidates to go back down just because of how they come up. So yeah, I think the bottom three. Just on my initial thoughts, I don't know what order this will be in, but Luton, um, Nottingham Forest, and Bournemouth. I can see Chelsea finishing mid-table again, but City are winning the league again. We're too good. Ashton, as a City fan, you're absolutely just, for the last, what, at least 10 years, you've just been absolutely inundated with really good players. And that is the same right now. I mean, you've bought uh, Gavardio, or whatever his name is. He's a really good defender. Really good. And you've lost Laporte, Laporte, who for a period of time was really good for Man City, but for the last like two or three years, not so much. You see, I, Chelsea is either going to be, I think that can end in an absolute dumpster fire easily this season because I don't, I don't really understand the managerial appointment. Don't get that. I mean, he's a, he's a he's a player or he's a manager who likes developing players, which is great. But Chelsea, and this may have changed, obviously with the new ownership. But Chelsea historically haven't give, given one fuck about building players up to keep them at the club. They've always built the players up and then sold them. That's how they were able to at least look as if they're not losing money hand over fist each season. I mean, they were, they were building players up like Lukaku, Kevin De Bruyne. Like, they were all part of Chelsea's, I say youth system, they weren't really, but they bought them in and then sold them on. Newcastle United over Chelsea is a massive shout. I think it depends how far they go in the Champions League. That's true. I didn't even think about the impact of the Champions League on Newcastle. Uh, I just think that they've got a really good... I think Eddie Howe's got the sort of players that he needs or wants in the team. I think the last of the players that would cause... I'm not saying he did cause any issues, because he, he didn't, as far as I'm aware. But St. Maxim was the sort of player we think, is he what Eddie Howe really wants? And now he's obviously gone for a half decent amount to uh, the Saudi league. So, yeah, they've got some good players. Harvey Barnes is literally a, I'd say, the archetype of player that Eddie Howe wants. For me, that is the model sort of player, especially for a forward player. That's the sort of player that Eddie Howe wants. He's got a really good midfield. Um, got a couple of good defenders. Good free, t- good uh, set piece taker, which is key. So yeah, I think they will do well. I just don't know how far they'll go in the Champions League. Like you say, uh, I think. <sighs> Yeah, Jordan says, I think Forrest ran their luck last season, as did Bournemouth. I think the big thing for Forrest is that I don't they may I don't have like an updated list of signings for them. I don't know who they've signed. I don't know who they've signed. So I'm just going on a, by what I have I know just by regurgitation of media. So I don't know. But yeah, I think Forrest did run a little bit of luck last season, maybe. I think I still think they deserve to stay up, but yeah, Bournemouth. That's a weird one. It's like a club. This, I think, there's a couple of, isn't there? Like a couple of celebrities that have bought into Bournemouth, and have started to try and pump some money into signings and that. I don't know. I'm assuming you're talking about Chelsea here, Ashton, when you say they're just making the squad too big. Again, they're signing players for the sake of it. 
I I do agree. I do agree. I don't I don't understand why they're buying Caicedo and Lavia. I mean, they're spending a hundred and hundred and eighty million on those two alone. Which is crazy. Pochettino is a such a good coach. I agree he's a good coach. He gets a lot of good out of the young players. He brought Deli Ali up to the levels that he got to before he obviously fell off the wagon. Um, he brought a lot of players through. You could argue he, he brought a lot better out of Kane as well. But he just hasn't got the track record of a Chelsea manager. He just ha- he hasn't got it. For me, he is he is what Graham Potter would be in like five or six years. Pochettino. He's won very little. And I, I don't necessarily this is a bad thing. Just saying only there's only a select few managers who can win shit. So the vast majority of managers won't win anything in their entire careers. But you've got to value Chelsea value trophies. And the only way that Chelsea, in my opinion, is going to be financially successful and football in terms of football successful is winning trophies. And you're getting a manager in who hasn't won any. I don't know. I feel like the only time Chelsea have really done that well is when they've brought in a manager who has a history of winning trophies. It's very turbulent. Most of the time, they don't last very long. Conte, Ancelotti, they don't last very long. But they win things. They win things. If that's what Chelsea want to do, I don't think Pochettino is the, the right call. I don't get it. I don't, they must be wanting to win things at Chelsea. And I know every club wants to win things. I mean, Aston Villa want to win things. But Chelsea are in a, the point of you know, existence where they could realistically build a squad that could challenge and they could get a manager that could realistically challenge for a title or for a cup of some description. I just don't think that Pochettino's that sort of manager. Fuck me, he might go and prove me wrong. He might just go and absolutely smash the league. Who knows? They've got some good players at Chelsea. They're signing a few players that I don't know why they're signing, like that Elise or whatever his name is from Crystal Palace. I don't know why. I mean, it might be a value thing. They see him as 35 million release clause. Get him because then in a couple of years, we'll be able to sell him for 65. We don't know. That might be what they're trying to do. I don't know. He's got a plan. I think it all ends with the Super League, but that's a conspiracy for another day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I really appreciate everyone joining me today. Uh, sorry, it was a, a solo one, but we, we'll be back at it next week. Dan will be back from holiday and uh, John will be able to join us. I don't know what we're going to do the podcast on. I'll do some uh, research and see if there's anything interesting flying about. I hope everyone enjoyed the episode today. It's been interesting just to look at the uh, whole 23 and me thing. If you are interested, remember it's £99 for the basic, 179 for the upgraded. If you are interested in doing it, it's quite a lot of money to spend on it, to be honest. I mean, I remember we did it like last, was it last year? I think it was last year or early this year. I can't remember. So it's been, we've had the information for quite a while. But yeah, it's quite an investment. But yeah, thank you for joining us or joining me rather on this one. I'll see you in the next one. Up the Atma. Bye-bye for now.